Well, then, uh, very briefly, let me speak about uh, one of the more recent uh, developments of, uh, uh, in the sphere of, uh, of neurology, the, uh, the implantation of uh, electrodes in the brain. Uh, this, of course, has been done on a large scale in, uh, in animals, and in, uh, in a few cases it's uh, been done in, hopeless, um, in cases of the hopelessly insane uh, and it is anybody who's uh, watched uh, the behavior of rats with uh, electrodes planted in different centers uh, must uh, come away from this experience with the most extraordinary doubts about what on earth is in store for us if ever this is got hold of by a dictator if uh, the uh, I saw not long ago some rats uh, in Magoon's laboratory at UCLA. Uh, there were two sets of them, one with electrodes planted in a pleasure center. And these rats were, the, the technique was that they had a bar which they pressed uh, and which um, turned on a very small current for a short space of time, which uh, we had a wire connected with their electrode and which um, uh, Stimulated this pleasure center, which was evidently absolutely ecstatic, because these rats were, were pressing the bar 18,000 times a day. <laughs> and, uh, apparently, if you kept them from pressing the bar for a day, they would press the bar 36,000 times on the following day and would fall till they fell down in complete exhaustion. <laughs> uh, and they would neither eat nor be interested in the, uh, the opposite sex and would just go on pressing this bar. Uh, then the most extraordinary rats were those where the electrode was planted halfway between a pleasure and a pain center, and where evidently the, the result was a kind of mixture of the most wonderful ecstasy in being on the rack at the same time. <laughs> and you, you would see the rats sort of looking at its bar and sort of saying, to be or not to be, that is the question. <laughs> and finally would approach and do it. And then it would... <laughs> Go back uh, with this awful, uh, I mean, the, uh, if one can humanize or uh, anthropomorphize, I mean, he was feeling something terribly mixed. And he would wait for quite a long time before pressing the bar again, but he would always press it again. I mean, uh, this was the, uh, the extraordinary thing. And the, in the, I noticed in this um, most recent issue of Scientific American, there's a very interesting article on electrodes in the brains of chickens. Uh, where the, the technique is, uh, is very ingenious. You, you sink into their brains a little um, socket with a, with a screw on it, and the electrode then can be a screw deeper and deeper into the brain stem, and you can test at any moment, according to the depth of uh, which goes in fractions of a millimeter, of what you're stimulating. And, and these creatures are not merely uh, stimulated by wire, they are fitted with a, a miniaturized radio receiver weighing less than an ounce, which is attached to them, so that they can be communicated with at a distance. I mean, they can run about in the barnyard, and you can press the button. And uh, the, this particular area of the brain to which the electrode has been screwed down to will be stimulated, and <coughs> you will get these uh, fantastic phenomena that a, a sleepy chicken will suddenly get up and rush about, or... A, uh, an active chicken will suddenly sit down and go to sleep, or a hen will suddenly start sitting as though it were, uh, were hatching out an egg, uh, or a rooster will start fighting, or will suddenly go into a state of extreme depression. Uh, the, uh, the whole picture of the absolute control of the drives is, a, uh, is terrifying. And uh, in the cases, the few cases in which this has been done with very sick human beings, uh, the effects are evidently very remarkable too. I was talking last summer to, uh, in England to Gray Walter, who is the um, most eminent exponent of the electroencephalogram techniques in England, and he was telling me that they, he's seen hopeless uh, inmates of asylums with these things in in their heads, and that uh, these people were suffering from the uncontrollable depression. And they were, they'd had a, 
the electrodes inserted into something resembling evidently the pleasure center of the rat. Uh, anyhow, when they felt too bad, they just pressed a button in the battery in their pocket. And he said the result was fantastic. The mouth would go down, would suddenly turn up, and they would evidently feel, for, I don't know for how long at a time, very cheerful and happy. So that <clears throat> here again one sees uh, the most uh, uh, extraordinary uh, revolutionary techniques uh, which uh, are now available uh, to us. Now, the, uh, I think w w w the, what is obviously perfectly clear is that for the present, these techniques are not being much used except in a purely experimental way. But I think it is extraordinarily important uh, for us to realize, first of all, to, uh, to realize what is happening, to make ourselves acquainted with what has already happened, and then to use a certain amount of 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 imagination to extrapolate into the future uh, the sort of things that might happen. I mean, what might happen if, uh, if these fantastically powerful techniques uh, were used by unscrupulous uh, people in authority? What on earth would, would happen? What, what sort of society would we get? Nineteen eighty four is I believe a quite terrifying masterpiece. So terrifying in fact I don't think I should like to read another like it. I am not absolutely dissatisfied with it. I think it is a good idea, but the execution would have been better if I had not been under the influence of T B when I wrote it. You once claimed that you have an ability to face unpleasant facts. Is that what you've demonstrated in 1984 by drawing an accurate portrait of the future? I think that allowing for the book being, after all, a parody, something like 1984 could actually happen. This is the direction the world is going in at the present time. In our world, there will be no emotions except fear, rage, triumph and self-abasement the sex instinct will be eradicated, we shall abolish the orgasm, there will be no loyalty except loyalty to the party, but always there will be the intoxication of power, always at every moment there will be the thrill of victory, the sensation of trampling on an enemy who is helpless. If you want a picture of the future, Imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. The moral to be drawn from this dangerous nightmare situation is a simple one. Don't let it happen. It depends on you.